Hi, thank you for your question. Yes, I have, which is very rare for me because I'm a very, like, uh, extroverted, um, my husband calls me, like, uh, his ray of sunshine. <laughs> like, I'm a pretty positive person. We joke that I have two moods, happy and pissed off. That's it. No in between. When I had to go um, off testosterone, I went through um, a pretty rough period of depression and anxiety so bad that it was hard for me to leave the house. Not even leave the house, leave the bed. I still have panic attacks now, um, but at least, like, I can live life. It's nowhere near the level it was before, um, and I'll definitely get into how I overcame them, or I don't want to say overcame because I still deal with them, but maybe minimize them. So my anxiety was so bad during this period that I became, like, heavily dependent on others. I could not be left alone at all. My mom and I were sharing a car at the time. My son was very young. Um, and during her shifts at work, she would actually have to drive me down the street to my dad's house because I just couldn't stand being alone. I was constantly flooded with thoughts like, you know, what if I were to like have a heart attack? What if I was to die? What if an emergency was going to happen and no one's here to help me? Um, if I was in public, I was constantly worried about passing out. It started to get to the point where my anxiety was so bad um, that even things like showering were like such a, uh, I almost said adventure, but not an adventure, not an adventure, um, the opposite. I remember when I was at my worst, I literally would have to put on, like, um, meditations, uh, specifically for showering, um, and I'd have to follow along with them, like, the woman would be like, okay, now massage your scalp, and, and I'd have to do that step by step because it was so hard for me to get out of bed and just even take a shower. I'm fortunate that I had a lot of family support at the time, so, like, my son, he was okay. But I will be honest, like, there was a period of time where I was barely functioning, really. But I did get myself out, and I'm so proud because I did I did it on my own. I mean, I, even though I had support, like, the motivation to actually get better on my own and to take that initiative and to actually participate in the steps that I gave myself, like, I did that, and I'm so proud of myself. So the thing about anxiety, obviously, is like, it's like, say your world is like very vast, it's like very open, um, then like, as you listen to the anxiety and you start like not hanging out with friends, you start like not going grocery shopping, you, your, your window gets smaller and smaller. And I'm taking some of this from a book I read by, uh, or actually it's a workbook by David Carbonell. It's like the panic attack workbook. It really helped me. Um, but basically anxiety, like kind of, you know, it narrows your your window smaller and smaller so I had to relearn how to do things that were so simple like pumping gas getting out of my car and pumping gas I mean something so simple or I remember uh one of the things I wanted to be able to do again was to walk into a Dunkin Donuts and order face to face I wanted to be able to do that and that sounds so silly but I was just consumed with like anxiety and like just hopelessness at times like I felt very depressed that this was my life and I felt like I couldn't do anything and that I had to be dependent on others that to me that seemed like almost impossible as crazy as it sounds one day I found a quote and it was like um I'm not gonna die until things get better and that's a threat and I love that quote and I still say it to myself sometimes and that really kind of like lit lit a fire under my ass like it really made me like uh just want to find a way to get better. So what I did is I started, um, I just went on the computer in a Word document and I listed a bunch of things um, that I wanted to be able to do again, like pumping gas, um, ordering coffee in person. I wanted to be able to uh, go through like maybe two aisles in a grocery store. You know what I mean? Um, just these goals that to most people would be like everyday things they don't even think about. But to me, like I really struggled with. And I put like boxes, like, or brackets, whatever, underneath each one. And every time I would complete one of those things, I would check it off. And um, just seeing my progress and how much, like, I was starting to be able, even like the first day, like, I maybe did one thing. Then the second day, I did a couple more things. And each time it got easier to engage in those activities. And I could see firsthand, like, oh my gosh, look at how many times, like, I put myself. And, um, you know, my freedom first and like took that step to, uh, you know, face my anxiety head on. 
and that exposure to this, you know, activities that I've done before, but, um, that had become so, like, uh, foreign and scary to me, uh, became really easy to do after a while, um, they became easier and easier, and, um, it, seeing the progress, like, physically, like, on paper, it really made me feel proud. Another thing I did, which this is, um, a little bit more towards, like, the depression aspect, um, but what I would do is I had this journal, and it was called, uh, Positive Thoughts Over Coffee. I still have it. So every night I would write down positive things that happened that day. And it might be, you know, from the other chart that like, oh, I was able to get through three aisles in the Dollar Tree today. Um, and it's so funny because I do like shopping videos all the time now, but my life wasn't always like this. But I'd write like, you know, other positive things like, I don't know, like I heard from an old friend or um, I don't know, I got my favorite drink at, you know, Starbucks. I don't fucking know. Like just, you know, like little things that really made me happy. Um, and what I would do is the next morning while I was drinking my coffee, I would read those positive things. And the reason I did that is because I was, you know, setting the stage for me to start on a positive note. It was giving me hope for the day. It was giving me hope that like today could have some positive of things that can happen. There might be things that like bring me excitement, comfort, like in that really, um, it just, it really helped me start off the day on like a really, with a really good vibe. So yeah, those are two things that really helped me when I was feeling like super, super hopeless and, uh, just consumed by anxiety and then depression because once you're window of life gets smaller and smaller, obviously that's very depressing. Um, uh, so yeah, I hope this helps.